Can you explain the three mysteries of Colossians chapter 2, verse 2? So let's read it. Colossians 2, 2. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ. At the end of that verse, it talks about the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. Is that referring to a single mystery that all three persons of the Godhead share together? Or is it referring to three different mysteries? So let's study it out. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to run a search, and I'm going to run the search for mystery of God. So you can see there the search term mystery of God, and you can see it's in Colossians chapter 2, verse 2. Uh, we're going to look at Revelation 10, verse 7 for a minute here. This is the other place where mystery of God appears. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. Now notice what it says as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. Well, the mystery of God is obviously talking about a mystery that God has given, that he, that he shared with, that he revealed to, the Old Testament prophets. Look with me at Amos chapter 3, verse 7. I know it's kind of unfair to ask you to find Amos. Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos. Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret, a mystery is a secret, unto his servants the prophets. So what I'm going to suggest to you is this, what the mystery of God is, is it's the fulfillment of, of the prophetic program that was given to the prophets. So if you look at Revelation 10 and 7 just again, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, so that's the seventh trumpet, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. It's, it's in other words, it's the fulfillment of the prophetic program that was revealed to the Old Testament prophets. So that's the first mystery. The next mystery is the mystery of Christ. So let's run a search on that. So, we see the mystery of Christ in Ephesians 3, verse 4. And let's go ahead and just look at the context here. Ephesians 3, 4. Whereby, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Verse 5. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it, that's the mystery of Christ, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Now notice verse 6, because this is going to give us the definition of the mystery of Christ, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. So the mystery of Christ in Ephesians 3, it's defined as Gentiles being fellow heirs, they weren't in time past, and of the same body. Let's look at uh, Colossians chapter 4, verse 3. That's the other place where the mystery of Christ appeared. Colossians chapter 4, verse 3. With all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance, now notice this, to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. What Paul says in Colossians 4.3 is the specific reason that he, is, he was in bonds, that he was in chains, that he was, his liberty was restricted, was because of the mystery of Christ. And I'll just make the observation that if you think about Satan's warfare against the truth. 
Satan hates the dispensation of grace with a burning hot passion. If you think about 1 Corinthians 2, verses 7 and 8, it specifically says that if the princes of this world had understood the mystery, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So Satan hates the mystery because every time the mystery is proclaimed, it is a proclamation of his foolishness and his defeat. Satan hates it. Paul was in bonds for what reason? Speaking the mystery of Christ. So what the mystery of Christ is, is that Gentiles should be fellow heirs in the body of Christ as revealed during the dispensation of grace. So now what we're going to look at is the mystery of the Father. And so let me show you how I'm going to run this search. So I did M-Y-S-T-E-R asterisk and then F-A-T-H, Father. So, and the idea there is I want to capture mystery, mysteries, etc. In other words, I'm making the search as broad as I can. And I only get Colossians 2.2. 2. I don't get any other verse. So what then, how do I go about studying this? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to Ephesians 1, um, and we're just going to read some things together here that's going to give us the answer. So Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So notice that the, the subject here is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's talking about the Father. Verse 4, according as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Verse 5, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself. So who's the himself? It's still the Father. The adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Notice that's still the Father. Now go down to verse 9 for a minute. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. Well, who's the his in verse 9? And I'm going to tell you it's the same his that we saw before, it's the Father. So the mystery of His will is the mystery of the Father's will. This is going to tell us what the mystery of the Father is. So let's read verse 9 and 10 together. Having made known unto us the mystery of His will, according to the good pleasure which He hath purposed in Himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in Him. So now, let's go back to the chart just for a minute. So, when we looked at the mystery of God in Revelation 10, 7, what we saw was the mystery of God was the fulfillment of the prophetic program that God revealed to the Old Testament prophets. When we looked at the mystery of Christ, it was about the dispensation of the body of Christ in the dispensation of grace in which we live. So think about that with me just for a moment. When you think about the timeline as a whole, there are two big programs, right? There's the prophecy program, there's the mystery program. The prophecy program will redeem a group of people that will live on the new earth forever. The mystery program will redeem people during the dispensation of grace. They will live in the heavens forever. Well, the mystery of God pertains to the fulfillment of the prophecy program. The mystery of Christ pertains to the body of Christ in the heavenly program. So then what is the mystery of the Father? Well, it's about the dispensation of the fullness of times. In other words, where are we on the chart? That's way over here at the end, at the very end of time. And what happens then? All things are gathered together in one in Christ. That Jesus Christ will be the King of kings, the Lord of lords, 
all things will be gathered together in him. So that's what the three different mysteries are in Colossians 2, chapter 2. One pertains to the prophecy program, one pertains to the mystery program, and one pertains to God bringing them all together in the dispensation of the fullness of times.